what's really happening in our society now is there is nihilism. There is evil. There is real evil. Then there is nihilism on it doesn't matter anyway. And that's what you're feeling. When I say yesterday we're losing hope, we're losing our belief that things can be better. It's that we're going down a nihilistic sort of way that we're like, it doesn't matter anyway. Why am I paying attention? It doesn't matter. It does. It does. But now there's something else that is appearing and it's pop nihilism. And that seems to be surging. And I don't think it's a coincidence that I mentioned yesterday blacklist and how all the good shows that we like are so dark. It's a culture of death on TV and movies and books and everything. Everything. Why are we drawn to this? I think there's a chemical reason we're drawn to it. And we're going to delve into that on a show in the future here too. There is a chemical reason. This is giving us hits of something. But then we're left empty inside. One of my producers uh, happened to hear a podcast on NPR. And this is, you know, this is why I pay people. So I don't have to listen to NPR, I guess. But um, we talked about this um, this morning when we came in and they said, Glenn, did you get that NPR thing I sent you? And I said, oh, yeah, I loved it. I didn't listen at all. And um, it was a podcast of an obscure author who wrote a book called in the dust of the planet. I actually did listen to it and it was fascinating. And it explains the nihilistic worldview. Now I should point out that the author is a professor at the New School in New York, which was founded in 1919 by progressive educators. And remember at that time, the progressive academic types were aggressively pursuing eugenics. When you take Darwin and you couple it with nihilism and then progressivism, you can kill people if it's for the good of the collective, okay? And then somebody else will grind you up and make you the hamburgers. This will all be great. Anyway, this was, um, this was a great idea that, you know, we're all progressing into this great thing and, and you add the nihilism into it and, um, and it was great social engineering until Hitler's exploits were broadcast around the world and then the eugenics movement was stopped and progressives were shamed. So, back to this obscure little book on nihilism. It gets published a couple of years ago. Um, no one notices. But the author is watching TV one day. There's a popular TV show with Matthew McConaughey called True Detective. Big. And the lines the character is saying sounds familiar to this author. Watch. Look, I'd consider myself a realist, all right? But in philosophical terms, I'm what's called a pessimist. I think human consciousness it was a tragic misstep in evolution. We became too self-aware. Nature created an aspect of nature separate from itself. We are creatures that should not exist by natural law. We are things that labor under the illusion of having a self. This accretion of sensory experience and feeling. Programmed with total assurance that we are each somebody when in fact everybody's nobody. I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming, stop reproducing, walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. Hey, I want to party with that dude. This is the kind of stuff that you almost heard on the streets of New York um, with the global warming thing. And it was ripped right out of the book in the dust of the planet. Turns out it didn't just sound like it. They were actually taken from that book. The writer of the show was asked about the inspiration for the character. And he said it was largely influenced by that book. Well, not long after the author of the book is watching another clip. This time, this clip is of Beyonce and Jay-Z. And here's Jay-Z wearing a leather jacket in the dust of this planet. Okay, in the video, here's the video uh, where he's running around, basically he's shooting things and looking at Beyonce taking her clothes off. All righty there. So we got this going for us. Um, and, and you see him, uh, there's a place here, the t-shirt that he's wearing. Anyway. All of this stuff is happening and it's, it's on McConaughey and now it's here. So NPR takes our tax dollars and this time I would say thank you. And they interview the costume designer 
for this. And they said, w w w why this? Now this, this costume designer has a long list of celebrities that she influences. And she said something very interesting, listen. It occurred to Andy and I during the interview that uh, June has probably influenced the fashion sense of a significant portion of the human beings on this planet. And she was very clear that a costume is more than just a costume. It's like mm. a conversation without words. That really what she's doing when she styles someone is whispering to all the people that are going to watch the videos, come in contact with the billboards, go to the concerts. Like, I don't have to talk to you, but I can create this conversation with a pair of pants and how they fall and how they fit and the texture and the color and the feel. But she says one of the loudest whispers was super simple. Just, here's a guy, massive pop star. Like a sovereign. He's in the desert, it's about to go down. The end of the world is literally on his back. But it was almost as if he didn't even know that was on his back. You know what I mean? It's like, that was the afterthought. Like, oh yeah, the world's ending? Psst, I don't care. Hmm. So she wanted to convey a message. And the message is, world's ending. JD doesn't care. He's a nihilist. Now she has access to all these celebrities. That's good. I mean, I'm not, there's no conspiracy here. There's nothing. This is what she does. Progressives, in particular, are masterful at infecting the culture and making their views become cool and the norm. Suddenly, this obscure book is everywhere. It's in, in fashion magazines. It's cool to be a nihilist. We, in, in the conservative movement, in, in the, the Christian movement, in the, religious, in the religious sphere, the spiritual sphere, we ignore the culture. We complain about what everybody else is doing. And we complain about how they're affecting it. I, I don't, I'm not complaining. I, whatever, whatever she's doing, she's doing. That's fine. Where are we? Where are we? Where is somebody on our side trying to infect the culture? I talked to, um, um, oh, Tiffany, what was the guy's name? I uh, so, feel so bad now. I, I know his name. A big movie star. I remember I had dinner with him in Chicago. We, couldn't talk about it for a long time. Um, I, uh, he was the comedian, the, yeah, Vince Vaughn. I'm talking to Vince Vaughn one time, and he's saying to me, uh, Glenn, he said, I said, I had no idea, Vince, that you were like this. He said, you've never noticed the t-shirts I wear in my movies? No. Go back and look. You'll see him reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine in bed. You'll see him wearing the Don't Tread on Me shirt. He does that subtly in movies, and nobody seems to notice, but it's there. There's very few people doing that on, that on our side, and we have to be on the front lines, because as this world devolves into chaos and depravity, people are searching for meaning. We have to provide them with truth in every platform possible. Let me tell you something. If God only spoke to you in church, would you ever hear him? No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. If that's the only place he spoke, to, he speaks to us everywhere. Everywhere we look, it's breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. We're not leaving any breadcrumbs. We're not making anything cool. We've been down this nihilist road before, and it does not ever end well.